And it's Chad Tomaszewski with TSI Today. We headed north up to Edmonton to spend some time with Sports Central. Next up, Sunil Agnahadri, where we're going to dive into sports analytics. We're talking about the tech changing your business. I'm Chad, and this is TSI Today. Hey, it's Chad Tomaszewski here, back with TSI Today. Um, here with our final guest before we head into our round table. Sunil, thank you so much for being part hey, of this. Thanks Appreciate for having it. Me. Appreciate it. You know, this has been a bit of a stray from our, our normal. You know, normally we're diving into technology and how it affects your life. But you are involved in technology, just a little bit different. And I have to say that, you know, if you look at TSI Today's podcast from the beginning, it's always been about how technology has changed our lives. And I think that what you do is, is a great example of that. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about sports analytics and how you're getting this information? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm, I'm like a lot of Canadian kids where I grew up just loving hockey, watching hockey. and. Um, and you know, as fans, we love watching the game. We love you know going to games and you know buying merchandise, all that. But as fans, we always want to do more, right? We want to get involved with the game as much as we can. So you know, think back to when you're a kid and you're collecting hockey cards, um, and then as you get older, you might get into fantasy league and things like that. Or um, and then eventually, you also want to have a voice. Something that Mark was talking about earlier is that fans always want to have a voice to express their opinions and thoughts on things. And so I was, you know, probably in, I would say, high school when, you know, message boards started coming out online. Um, and that's where I started to learn more about the game, get other people's ideas. So that technology really changed how I saw the game, how I perceived it. And then over time, these other new tools were coming out and people were talking about these advanced statistics and, and things like that and just different way to analyze the game. Because you can read the paper, you can watch the experts on TV and they provide great insight. But as fans, there's always this craving for a little bit more. You know, I want a deeper dive, I want deeper analysis. Um, and so then being able to go online and finding that data, answering those questions that you might have, combining that with what you see and what you, what you hear and what you read in the papers, um, it's really changed how you view the game, how you enjoy the game. Um, and so analytics has just been that. It's been a way for people to engage with the game a little bit differently. Uh, and for me personally, like it's just been so much more enjoyable when you can combine what you're seeing with, you know, what the data is telling you, what others are saying, um, and it really has just completely changed the way I get to experience the game, which has been awesome. That's great. So, what technology are you using, or, or to get all that data together? Is it really just an Excel spreadsheet? Well, I feel yeah. like you're just this master mathematician that <laughs> has, is calculating, making all these calculations in your head I to wish. get all this data out to us as quickly as possible. I wish that was the case. Um, really, I know early on um, in my career at work, I was learning about you know SPSS, which is like a statistical pass, uh, package for social sciences, which is just an old uh, package that I don't even know if people use anymore. But I was starting to learn how to use Excel, Microsoft Access, SQL, um, these types of uh, tools that are used to you know, analyze data. But then over time, you can learn about things like Python and R and these other ways to you know, dive deeper into data and analytics. And so now for me personally, because there's other websites out there, there's other tools out there that are readily available, I still use my own databases. I have my own that are set up. But then there's all these fantastic sources online like Natural Statric and Puck IQ and things like that. Um, and so really, that's really where I get my data. Um, it's unfortunate because the NHL themselves haven't provided that data until only recently. But for the past 15, 15 plus years, um, it's just been fans that have figured out how to go to the NHL website, scrape the data, and then put them into new data sets that people can go and analyze. Um, and so that's really my, my go-to source is finding this information. And there are times where I need a specific metric or something that's just not out there, but it's an idea that was sparked in a discussion with somebody. And I do have to reach out sometimes to one of my friends who is a coding expert who can you know, build this uh, table for me. So it's, it's a lot of you know, exploring what's out there online, then also building your own networks to find people that can get you that data um, and then going from there. I find it so interesting uh, that you know you get McDavid, for example, takes a wrister and off the post, and uh, immediately we have the analytics that this is the eighth time he's hit the post this year, uh, 37th time in his career, maybe, and obviously it's a lot more than that probably. Uh, but it, it's so so fast, mm -hmm. so so it's it's so easily at our fingertips. 
I have to ask, like, do you often get players come to you and want to go through their stats so they can go, hey, I, my, I'm most accurate when I'm hitting, you know, the three hole uh, as I'm getting most of my goals inside there. Or, you know, they're reviewing tape and they're going, okay, my, my analytics, my stats are saying that I'm doing this a lot. How do I change that? Do you get that a lot? Not directly from players because I feel like players themselves, they're more concerned about what their coaches have to say, right? Um, but from other NHL uh, front offices and teams like that, people who work in the game, They've reached out to me once in a while about something that I've written or something that is out there that they want to check with me on stuff. So I've done some things on the, on the side like that. Um, really the, the most important thing with any of those metrics is finding out what matters. Um, and so I feel like that's the bigger challenge that teams are trying to figure out. Um, and I, I, I'm with you, like I do find it neat to get those numbers on the screen about you know how fast a player is going or uh, the shot of their speed, the location. It just gives you good context. And so in your mind, you can try to look for that the next time or uh, maybe try to predict what's going to happen, especially if you're in fantasy league. You want to know that <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Um, but for me personally, I want to know like what correlates to winning games. And so um, that's the kind of stuff that front offices are looking for all the time. Like is delivering the most hits going to help you win games? It helps, but it's not what's going to drive your results. It's things like creating chances and defending chances and uh, protecting certain areas of the ice. Um, so that type of data is what's you know really hard to get and we're starting to get there. Um, but that's, I think, the information that a lot of front offices are, are very interested in right now. So I have to ask, you know, your education is in, in sociology, yep. um, but you've somehow found yourself in the sports <laughs> analytics role. How in the world did you fall into this? It's interesting because in sociology, we learned a lot about group dynamics, like how do groups get things done? And so that's what was really at the forefront of my research when I went on to do my master's was, you know, how do fans, online hockey fans, how are they driving the new information that's out there? And so I got to spend time researching that. And the nice thing with sociology is I, it did introduce me to research methodology as well as um, the early ages of, of data analytics where we looked at statistical packages and things like that. Um, so really it was my fandom that drove it, a little bit what I learned in, uh, in university, but a lot of what I learned in high school, things about just proper good communication, writing skills, things like that. Um, and then just basic probability analysis, which I think is when I was younger, it was I think grade 10 or grade 11 that we learned that stuff, probably earlier now, but all of that combined mixed with just genuine curiosity of how the game works. Um, the cool thing is Edmonton too, we've got a ton of coverage that's out there. So you've got lots of content to read. Plus there's lots of fans out there that are you know, sharing their ideas and thoughts. And the neat thing about these fans is they also have you know, business backgrounds. They're, they're sitting in C-suites out there too. It's not just you know, guys that are just going to the rink and just watching the game. They're applying some of their own personal experiences and things like that. Um, so getting to learn from them um, and just seeing how they watch the game. And then also some of these fans are, they play, they coach, they referee. So they're providing their analysis online as well. Um, so especially in the blogging world, it's not as, as much as it was maybe 10, 15 years ago, but there was a time where message boards were filled with people that were just all walks of life and they would give their different ideas and thoughts. And so that really helped drive sort of my viewpoints of the game as well. So it's, uh, in the back of my mind, I was thinking, okay, this has got to be somebody with a lot of mathematical background um, or an IT base. Is there one it, that it's more centric around? Like, is it because of, you know, the SQL and all the other different coding you were talking about earlier? Um, is it more of an IT based uh, knowledge that you would need to do the sport like, or not sport, but I, is it more of an IT based uh, education that you would require to do something like this? Or is it more mathematics? Uh, it's a little bit of A, a little bit of B, but I'd also throw in the number one thing that you need if you want to get into analytics or blogging like I've done or you know, getting, the cool, getting to do that cool stuff. You got to start with communication skills because um, really you have to know when you have all this information, all this data, you got to know how to present it. I mean, if you're getting all this data, you might have amazing stuff at your fingertips. But if you can't communicate it and put it into context and present it in a way that, you know, pretend you're writing to somebody who's, who works in the front office. He's not, he or she is not going to care about the tables and all that. They need to know what is the problem you're trying to solve, why is it important, and then you provide that extra context. So I would always start, communications is, is massive, but then a lot of it is 
the tools that you use. It's more of the IT side um, because again, the math knowledge that you need is about probability analysis. So it's not like you need like a master's in you know statistics or anything like that. So I feel like it's a, a IT heavy first and then the mathematical analysis, you would need to know what to do with that data. Um, so it's a little bit of both for sure. That's crazy. I never thought when I was trying to shoot a puck as hard as I possibly could because I thought that was the most important thing. Um, that uh, there's so much science, mm -hmm. you know, but it, in every sport there is. And uh, I just, uh, it's fascinating to me that uh, that we can actually do this for a career. It's, it's great. Yeah. Um, last question I ask all my guests is, for the young viewers watching today that want to get involved in a technology-based business of some kind, they wanted to follow your path. What could they do to get started? Well, what I get to do is, you know, this hockey analysis stuff. I have my own website. I get to do work with uh, the Nation Network with writing there. I do some work with CBC Edmonton News on a weekly basis or a monthly basis. Um, that's all fun and great, but none of that could happen until I had a foundational uh, understanding of the real business world. Um, and so anyone who wants to get into hockey analysis or analytics or things like that, I would tell them to go refine your skills in an industry, um, you know, any industry, whether it's communications or the energy industry, healthcare, where you can actually build your skill set first. You know, how do you work with databases? How do you communicate the information? How do you apply statistical analysis? I would always advise go into a real world job, a real industry job, refine your skills, and then look to work in, in sports. The unfortunate reality is there's not a lot of jobs in sports industry. You really have to carve out your own role. And so if they do want to push ahead, you need to build your own brand. You got to build your own website. Um, and then if you want freelance for other websites or whoever contacts you. Um, but really the number one thing is build your skill set. Working in an, in an industry that's a little bit more stable, that will give you a good income and will give maybe even pay for education and then start looking into things like sports analytics because it's always going to be there. It's always going to be something that you can pursue, um, but just that it's so important to have that foundational concept before you get into that. That's crazy. Before we head over to the round table, if people want to get a hold of you, what would they do? Check out my website, thesuperfan.ca. Um, I'm also on you know every app you can think of, whether it's Blue Sky, Twitter, Facebook, I'm all there, but number one is just go to my website, thesuperfan.ca. Awesome. Sunil, thank you so very much. Hey, thanks, Appreciate Chad. it. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching TSI today. Catch up with us next time when we learn more about technology changing business today.